Chris Grayling, can you just start by giving us your assessment of where these negotiations are right now? Well, they're actually where I would have, would have expected them to be. I mean, did anybody honestly think we were going to walk into a room with the European Union, shake hands and do a deal in half an hour? You know, these are going to be lengthy negotiations. They're going to be challenging negotiations. They are seeking to get us to make as large a financial contribution as they can persuade us to. Uh, we have worked over the months to set out a whole range of different negotiating approaches. We've published position papers. We've published strategy papers. But this was always going to be a long and difficult negotiation. The, the trouble is, for an awful lot of people who voted leave, um, they weren't told at the time it was going to be this rough. They were told it was going to be quite easy. And I can, I can remind you of the reasons they may, might have thought that. So can, let's just look at this. It's a nonsense to suggest we can't do a deal that will carry on uh, allowing us to trade with the EU. I have no doubt at all that we will carry on trading tariff-free without tariff with the European Union. Do you still agree uh, with yourself? I still agree with myself because at the end of this negotiation, we are still their largest export market. There are businesses all around continental Europe that depend upon British consumers for their business. So, you know, right but now... But it's clearly being hard. Nonetheless, I mean, the implication was that it was going to be a breeze. It was going to be easy. It's not easy. No, nobody's ever said the negotiation would be straightforward and simple. But what I've always said is that I absolutely and firmly believe to, to today, as I believed then, that we will end up with a sensible deal, a sensible partnership with the future. Um, but nobody ever thought we were going to have negotiations that would last half an hour. What will be the consequences for this country if we don't get a deal? Well, this country will succeed whatever happens. You know, we have a hugely uh, impressive track record in the world. We trade around the world. Do you think it's perfectly OK? Well, uh, I think it is better for us to have a good relationship with our neighbours in Europe to carry on trading freely. We are their biggest export market. We do business together. Of course, it is better that that is the case. And that's where I think we'll get to. But I'm absolutely confident that Britain will succeed come what may. It's just that, you know, over the last week or two, the government itself, Chancellor, Prime Minister, have started to raise this question of no deal. And some of your colleagues are quoted saying it's a 50-50 chance now of no deal, which is not something that many people expected even a few weeks before. So we seem to be in new territory now. So I ask again what you think the consequences of no deal would be for well, us. I think, I think Britain will succeed, but I don't think we'll get to that position. It's about the one thing I would agree with John McDonnell on. I think we will reach a sensible trading position. And that's, but the key right. point is... And that's despite about, hearing people like Hillary Clinton and Christine Lagarde and many others saying it would be very, very bad for Britain. Well, it's, it's bad for the European Union if we don't have a sensible trading arrangement. But, but Britain, will, Britain will succeed. And there's nothing new about this. Theresa May, back in her uh, speech at Lancaster House earlier this year, said... Uh, no deal is better than a bad deal. And where I fundamentally disagree with John McDonnell, as we heard earlier, him saying, we must do a deal in all circumstances. There is no serious business leader in this country who would enter a negotiation on the basis that they'd accept the terms regardless of what they are. So, of course, we have to plan for an option where there is no deal. We don't expect that, we're not aiming for it, and I don't think that's where, we, where we're going to end up. It may be, however, where we end up. Let me put to you what Sir Martin Donnelly, who was Permanent Secretary at the Department of International Trade and therefore knows about these things, said. He said, no deal would mean a huge amount of legal uncertainty, and that's very bad for businesses, for jobs, for investment in Britain. It would be a very serious outcome. The WTO, you point out, doesn't cover much in the way of service industries, which accounts for 80% of our economy, and therefore it would be a very serious position for the British economy. That's Martin Donnelly. Well, uh, I remain absolutely of the view that Britain will succeed come what may, but I also believe we'll end up with a sensible agreement with the European Union because it's in both of our interests that that should happen. But of course we must plan for all eventualities. People would think it was ridiculous okay, if so the government are... wasn't planning for all eventualities. So we're 